everybody we are back i'm gonna apologize uh in advance for the video quality i don't 100 percent know why my skype window now will not uh will not work for me but <coughs> you can see at least sid's beautiful face right now oh really um <laughs> sorry uh it, it will probably switch between jesse and aaron and i apologize in advance but you should be able to hear everyone just fine um all right, so where do we leave off? What was card number nine, Glazer? Uh, we finished with Euron Silence. We are on to Andric the Unsmiling. Hmm. So Andric is ridiculous in and of himself, but with Pillage, he's the other reason that Milk is kind of useless. Like, you get lucky, you Pillage a Milk turn one, and now you've just got dead cards. You're not getting anything off. Greyjoy is getting their mill off. He's a really, really good body. The only thing that it all keeps him in check is Ward. Oh, yeah. But but Andric can turn a game on a pure random pillage. And it's not even when he pillages a card. It's just whenever he pillages. If there's a card that just happens to be chilled in the discard pile, it's gone. Yeah, he's got that weird little year on interaction where it's not the card he pillages. which I, I don't like that. It's like... After his pillage goes off, well, whatever's there, go go for it, right? Um, I don't like that. It should have just been the card he pillaged, right? It's it's just very very swingy. Like once you pillage something, like you pillage something random, and any other copy you have while Andrik is on the board is extremely temporary. Yeah. Yep, that's fair. I mean, I haven't really seen Andrik actually much out in the wild, either at Star Championships or when I'm playing on the Iron Throne, so I don't really have enough experience with him, but again, he still reads as a really strong card. Pretty solid. <coughs> what? He's pretty solid. No, no, he's great. Like, I think in time, he's going to be more than one of. Like, I think he solves a lot of what annoys Greyjoy by pure luck. Not sure about that, but... Like, sometimes Greyjoy just can't get... Like, unless you're running the zero-cost event, sometimes Greyjoy just can't get unopposed to get rid of whatever's annoying them, right? Like, the opponent... I think, I think anyone not running that event in Sea of Blood is wrong. Yes, in Sea of Blood, but that's not the only Greyjoy deck that exists. Ugh. It's that and Drown God, and everything else is worthless. <laughs> oh. Worthless. I love it. I hope so. I hope come thrown so that's there's, true. <laughs> there's a, definitely at least two other Greyjoy decks, and I think there's three other Greyjoy decks. I mean, uh, there's a lot of other Greyjoy decks that are really good. I just they're boring. Yes, we're going to be talking about boring cards, Jesse, because they're <laughs> because this is the Greyjoy box. Nah, they're not all boring. City not all. Archivist is somewhere here. Well, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> he's not a Greyjoy card. That card's a nut. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I think Andric solves a lot of Greyjoy's problems, and I think he ends up being more than one, especially once Ward goes away. Yeah. He's a powerful card. What's the next one, Glazer? Old Gregor. Go ahead, Jesse. He's you very thought good. this was going to be the most busted card in the game. I still think it's the most busted card in the box. Well, it's the most busted Greyjoy card in the box. Ever yeah. Balog. I think it's the most busted Greyjoy card in Drown God. I don't think it's... I think it's good other places, but it's not. I don't think people are playing in other places, and I think they're wrong. Yeah. Do you think it should be more than a one-of? Yeah, I mean, everyone gripes about how oppressive Vents is. This just lets you Vents every turn. It's true. Cancels are very good. If you don't ever want to lose to orange cards, you should be playing this card. Seems important. Yep. So you should be running multiples of this guy. I think so. I mean, I do, but, like, I don't build my Greyjoy like normal people do. I don't slam 15 7 costers and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, he run. Jesse's like, I run 18 7 costers. Not in Greyjoy, usually. There's only a few I like. He feels so much, right? He's like, he's a combo all printed on one card, like, which makes him so good, right? Like, you usually don't see this kind of, this kind of pile bouncing, right? Outside of at least two card interactions, and that just it just makes it. He's just busted with Vince. Awesome. Can we just say it? Like, well, yeah, <laughs> like it's just ridiculous. Like, and for some reason, he's a bicon. <laughs> yes, he could have had no icons, and I wouldn't have cared. Yeah, 
He's awesome. And he's yeah. ironborn. <laughs> so he gets stealth. No, he doesn't. He's not yeah, unique. he does. Oh, he, he is. is. He's unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, he gets stealth. Right. But you're just like the other one who's not unique, so it's confusing. Well, not only <laughs> does he get stealth and is unique, but like he... There goes that thought. Like, he's yet more attachment control. He's yet more reason that milk is useless against Greyjoy now. That's true. Like, they're not winning by stacking power. They're winning by just being like, we got 18 big guys. What are you going to do? You can't win challenges anymore. Fair. So, like, if you milk it, it's just like, old oh, Gregor, do it again. Nope. I win. But I'm also, like, one of the five people left that, like, I don't think, uh... You want to say hi, Brad, even? Yeah. Uh, I don't think, uh, uh, I don't think, I don't think Vince is a problem in the game, so I don't think he's, like, super, and I'm not a Greyjoy player outside of Drown God, like, I just, like, don't think that he's leaps and bounds. I hear people talk about him all the time while they're sitting across me with a Targaryen house card. Like, I just, <laughs> anything you say to me is not important. Like... He's fine. He's a, like he's good, but he's just as good as other champ cards. Yeah, I, I mean, he, I think he's better than almost every other champ card, if not every single other champ card. He's definitely but not I, better than Fleet Bottom. Sure, nothing's he's definitely better not than, better than King of the North. Uh, he's about as good. As, he's about as good as King of the North. I think he's about as good as Mira, and I think those are the top non Fleet Bottom ones. He's definitely better than Mira. Like, uh, uh, I don't know about that. Within the context of their house, I'm not sure. Uh, I think, within the, I whoa, think, whoa, within the context of their house, that's definitely that's definitely true. I mean, what but, he does, what he does more than anything else, is he just takes Varys and says, "This isn't a card you can play anymore." Uh, that's not healthy for the game. Maybe I don't know. I mean, the question, like, I mean, this is the fundamental. I mean, this is. I feel like. We've been having a variant of this conversation in 90 different uh, venues, but like the question is whether or not you think that a key interaction of the game is Varus, right? I mean, rather is, is, rather I, than it's Varus is just one of a potential things that people could be doing in the game that's going to wax and wane depending on the popularity of specific other strategies. Whether or not Varus by default should just always be good. I think Varys by default should always exist, and I don't think with Greyjoy everywhere he can exist anymore. But so the so the problem is, and that's something I've faced like the past like couple of months is like, I think you don't think he should exist. Like I don't think the game is where you want it to be, and like that's upsetting. And like I get that as a player. Um, no, super, like, there's almost nothing in the game that actually upsets me right now. That's not what I've been saying lately at all. I just like I think that. If, if the field is 25% Greyjoy, then you should still play Varus, because he just crushes every other house. But the field isn't 25% Greyjoy. It is. And, and then they also gave Stark Mira, and they also and Tariq has every burn card under the sun. So just right? put like, Varus in Shadows, dog. I mean, yes, that is definitely a thing I do. And but Mira like, can't Mira can't do anything to the Mira can't do anything to the clear Varus. Yeah, he does. Yeah, she does. At the beginning of the phase, at the beginning of dominance, you sack him, right? It, I mean, end it, of dominance. He's a he's, at, he's at the end, end of dominance. The end of dominance. So just they you bring Mirror out and like you see Varys, you just bring Mirror out of shadows and Dom and blank him. But you can't always do that. That's the key thing. Like I mean, obviously you have to play around that if you know. If you're giving out Mirror in challenges, thing. you're losing out on a lot. Mm, yeah. I just feel like there's enough other ways to do Mira, right? Like, it's not like Stark wants for ways to do Mira yeah, right now. But the problem is I you need a you. gold to bring her out, right? And, like, the, so the question, like, obviously, if you know, like, against Martel Wolf or something like this, that, like, Varys could be an important strategy for them, you need to make sure you save one gold in the dominance. But, like, see, in see, some Wolf matchups, you just can't do that. Like Wolf is, Wolf is where it matters the least. Yeah. Like, Wolf just has so many goddamn tools that, like, Wolf's just, like, I've got 70 tools, and it just, Varys matters so much less in Wolf than everywhere else. Like, it's other Martell and Night's Watch. I, I let's just say, say, I've been playing a lot of Stark recently. <laughs> I don't like to see Varys at yes. all. Varys is bad for me. I mean, right, guys, everyone play, at Varys. You just play, <laughs> you just play the stupid guy who takes gold away from me. What? You play the Greyjoy guy that just takes gold for me after he wins a challenge. 
That's a, isn't that an attachment? I don't think so. I think it's just a character, right? The the so army? The army? Yeah, doesn't he take gold? No, from the treasury when you pillage a location or something. Isn't it Greyjoy attachment that does that? All right, the chat will know. You're talking about the army, the the Maybe. Silence's crew. Doesn't Silence's crew take money whenever? I don't know. Uh, if do it they? doesn't no, say drown god, I don't really read Facebook <laughs> cards. I don't know. What's this say? Hey, Unopposed. Ah, uh, skip it. <laughs> let's let's just move on to number six because we got a million things go. to talk about since this is our whole goddamn episode. Uh, number six is Murinmir. I hate Murinmir. Oh. Murinmir might be higher than he deserves considering what house I'm That's playing fair. right now. But but uh Mur and Mir should be a Lannister card. <laughs> well I think any good card should be a Lannister card. Okay, so. but no, Mur and Mir should be a Lannister card. Like it it fits in with Lannister. Greyjoy had enough different ways to screw up your locations. They didn't need yet another easy every deck can just cancel whatever location it wants. I don't know. I, I don't think he's broken or anything. He's 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 not really fitting into any other big archetypes, right? Like, he doesn't also support Drown God or also support other stuff. He's just, like, a one-of guy. You pop in, and you've got an option to can't Like, you kneel to cancel? Come on. This, this is this is, this is is Thrones 101 here. A character with an ability, you kneel him to cancel something that's infrequent enough that he's not going to break the game one way or the other. I think he's fine. He basically ends every viable strategy for one house. But sure, besides that, he's not so bad. Oh, come on. He can only do it once. Yeah, you could Dorn seven times, dog. Yeah, that's, not, yeah. The, that's not the faction <laughs> that he busts. Are you Who not he... aware of... Who does he bust? Seriously? Who does he bust? Rogers? He stops your Starfall, but... Who are we oh, talking about? Who does Murinmere fuck up? What house does Murinmere fuck up? The wall. Nice, the wall. Yes, the wall. Stark. Yes, the wall. You have uh, for three years. It's uh, fine. I'm pretty sure the wall decks play three milks. Like, if I get freaking milks oh, dropped on my Viserys, I think they'll drop a milk on him. All right. You are, like, you are now. You are now milk in, in Greyjoy. Yes, you are now milking Murinmir. You are now sure. milking Theon, and you are now milking. Because he shuts down your win condition. Like he's the best. But like, here's the thing: you don't have so to get to Mirror more to cancel the wall. Vic's already knelt that wall, dog. Don't worry about that. Vic's already knelt that wall. <laughs> That's literally what I'm saying. Like, you don't need multiple ways to do the same thing. So Night's Watch is bad. Night's becomes and, Greyjoy. That's healthy. And, and new wall. Murnmere is any phase. Yeah. Yeah, Vic is not any phase. This is correct. I think so. <laughs> Man, I think it's okay for houses to have healthy answers. I think... I think but you, you can stand it. up new. You can stand up new wall with with builder, right? So it's it's only really old wall that he. When that he when can you stand up new wall with builder? Whenever you want. Can you just, just uh, ditch him to stand it? To, sure, yes, but you can only do that once. So like, when do you <laughs> have to do? It? Um, In what phase? There we go. Oh my gosh. I mean, what phase do you have to do that? It's obvious. Aaron gets Aaron gets drafted in Night's Watch and just starts defending <laughs> builders. No, I, I know. I never thought I'd see the day. It's I don't, you don't understand. Uh, I mean, not everybody's in the Long Lancers chat, but I consider this discussion to be a personal apology from uh, Aaron Glazer to me for fucking three years of endless like. Because he's on Night's Watch now, and he's like, "Why does Greyjoy have a card that screws up our win condition?" No. You Years of me talking about Greyjoy. It's like, ah, it's not, not so bad. Why does Greyjoy have a card? It's why does Greyjoy have 18 cards that do the same thing? I don't know. Why does... That is their theme. That is their theme. <laughs> That's Brad Heeman okay. says. Yeah. Heeman with the slam dunk. It's their theme. They screw I mean, your location. Look, let's be honest here. Like, Mirror Mirror is, like, a lot. Like, he he's a lot of a card. Like... Uh. I, I do think he's probably a little too pointed clinky, <laughs> but like. Just be a Lannister card. Rejoy has enough no. of these. <laughs> <laughs> he should not be a Lannister card. Lannister he already should... has a card that cancels these things. Wait, it's he treachery. can be a Lannister card. You just have to play the Meester agenda. Play the Conclave, dog. Or yeah. Yeah. Cra Lanny Kraken. Oh, Lanny Kraken. Old yeah. school. Kick it old school. Put some newly made lords in there, too. That old really. Old school. 
I played Lanny Kraken not too long ago, boys. <laughs> oh, well, I'm talking about real Lanny Kraken, none of that <laughs> Shadows bullshit. Real Lanny Kraken. <laughs> that is the real Lanny Kraken. The Shadows builds the best. It, uh, I bet they I bet they bring zero I bet they bring zero Lanny Kraken Shadows build to war. <laughs> Fair bet. Uh, that's probably right. That All right, what's the, next, what's the next next card? Next is Maiden's Bane. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this card's sick. Yummy. I mean, has anyone, like, I haven't seen it anywhere. Yes, I don't. It's where's not Core ba- Yeah, where's, Justin oh, no, I've seen start against me but also. Where, where is Core Balon Maiden's Bane? It's not fun to play against. Like, what do you do against that? Just be sad? I mean, like, I think way more oppressive is just you're on Silence Maiden Spain. You do all three challenges with Intimidate. If you don't play against Targ, cool. I have three Intimidates. I win. <laughs> I mean, it's very good. That card is very, very good. I know uh, Rabs and I worked on, like, we're not playing it, but Rabs and I worked on, like, a Stark Kraken cohort build that was, like, trying to make our big fatties captains with Maiden Spain just to restand <laughs> them. <laughs> It it's was cute. Funny. It's definitely a cute. It's definitely. It cute. was not good. It was not good. <laughs> oh, captain, my captain. The deck. Uh, the deck. Uh, <laughs> oh. All right. But I think it's, it's very good. It's great. I mean, it's it just is stupid good, especially with. I, I think any, there's a any great joy character you can get the unopposed with. Do you think? Do you think that one's? Better or worse than Golden Storm? Better. Yeah. I think Golden Storm's real good. I don't think it makes this list. Like, I think Golden Storm's real good, but it's a step below. Sure. Yeah, Golden Storm is, is more niche because it's like, to really get the most out of Golden Storm, you, you want to be doing more than... Like, it, it works on military challenges only, right? So you can stand it to get other kind of cool warship tricks, but it's not like, <coughs> really chaining this thing. Yeah. Sure. Agreed. Yeah. I also think Golden Storm only really has one home. Which is okay. what, Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> no. Right? Like, I think Golden Storm's really good in Sea of Blood, and I don't think it's necessarily great anywhere else. Just, you want to stop them winning by five, right? It's hard to win military against Greyjoy. You want to stop them winning by five, and they're like, ha-ha, screw you. Here's where I tell everyone it's like its home is in Drown God and not say another word and then wake up to, like, 75 messages. Like, <laughs> let me see this sick. Golden Storm Drown God build. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask this, and I'm pretty sure I'm wrong, but I don't know why. Can Great Wick discard the turn every phase once you have two um, Vinces in the dead pile? What card? Great Wick. After character is from your body, you probably choose and discards one card from his or her hand. Limit once per phase. Once you have two drown two Vinces in the dead pile, can't you just do that every phase? No, because Vince is max once per phase per round. Per round. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. He can only come out once per round. Okay, that's helpful. A limit. Also, yeah. So you can only discard two per round. Okay. Christ. That's but there's so many right. better like there's so many better things Greyjoy could be doing than using this card. Like, I think this card yeah, is not on the list. I, I, I like the design space of this card, but I think this card is bad. <laughs> like Greyjoy That's... just has, I mean, just has so many better things to be doing. Either Drown God or some mid-range strategy that's about punching set you in the face with seven costers until you cry. Oh. Uh... <laughs> All right, let's do number four. Ghost number four is Scouting <laughs> Vessel. <laughs> Scouting vessel number four? Scouting vessel, eh? Scouting vessel's freaking busted. All right. Are, are, are we just ranking cards? What yeah, Glazer doing? ranked them for us. He's got a list. It's We're got a list. It's, it's, it's basically list. just a way to talk about it. Like, it's not even about the ranking. It's Did just a way Ray to talk. Wick ranked? No. No, he just brought oh, the card up. Okay. I just thought of it. Okay. Uh, scout, scouting vessel is four. I think scouting vessel is completely busted. It's a zero cost warship. It doesn't have to say anything, <laughs> although it does. It does. It's it's would be a, it would be a top ten card in the box if it said nothing because of Vic. 
but then it does say stuff, so it's insane. It and the stuff, says and the stuff, stuff says and then they made that obnoxious. ruling about it oh my God. that makes it even more obnoxious. Like, So, is this the first time, like, and I'm wrong, is this the first time that the ruling, like, goes against the true spirit of the game? That's not how it was intended, right? I mean, well, the Danny time. made the ruling almost instantaneously, so I'd imagine, yes, that is how it's intended. Because it Gotta wasn't... Be yeah. It was like Asha. You draw three cards with your heart, you steal three things. It, that's not even what annoys me. <laughs> it's the, like... It's even the space right there. Oh, we need a screen capture. <laughs> I'm just like... The, the, it just caved in for a second. Like, what? You steal three things? What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's... When a character you control discards a card using Pillage, you own Sacrifice Scouting Vessel, to discard three cards instead. So you Pillage one with Asha, you sack it, you Pillage three instead. You can search no, your deck no, three times. You don't Pillage three cards instead, you discard it's, it, sure. it's It's still, but Brad, it converts each it one into a separate happen. instance of Pillage. Mm -hmm. So it, it, how, how Roy and how Danny's explained it is like, it breaks it down to each instance as a Pillage. But Three pillage instances. We agree with you. <laughs> I agree Brad, with Brad, everyone agrees with you. Well, Brad, not everyone. Excuse uh, me. Danny, Danny yeah. Schaefer doesn't Danny agree with does you. Danny does not agree. But it, what it does is it... Yeah, that's how it works. That's it, how Scott Vessel works. Yeah. Yes. Why is 80% of the field hockey? Like? It, it does <laughs> something that no one even thought uh, it was. Like. <laughs> People wanted clarification, and it was like, oh, it does something crazy. <laughs> what? Very good. How it's basically it turns each character has pillage into having three instances of pillage printed on them. So. Okay. It says Greater has all the saves they could possibly want. <laughs> it's also real done with corp, uh, corpse like. It's real done with corpse. It's really done with Euron. Like, it, like the Euron Asha, the the Asha interaction is like, okay, draw three cards. Okay, I can live with that. It's when they like steal. Th Three oh, characters, yes. or three, not oh, characters, it's the three. search your whole deck and get the exact three <laughs> cards that can screw me over. Mm -hmm. Like, search your whole deck. Okay, I've got a Vince, and I got two <laughs> A dupe? Let's not forget the dupe. Yeah, get, get, I some, was, get something I was, off the board. I was yep. playing a game. I was, it was the first time I played with, like, Greyjoy big dudes in uh, a very long time. I was, like, testing a deck for a friend, and I stole, with well, Euron, turn three, King's Road, King's Landing, and something else. I don't care what so, the other card was. So then can you trigger Scouting Vessel off of itself? What do you yes. mean? Yeah, yes. on the third one, you can do it again. On the third one, you can do it again. And all those counts as separate pillages? Yes. yes. So do you have... Yeah. I have, someone do, I have someone trigger in one challenge three Scouting Vessels. Yeah. So, on Iron Throne once. So, <laughs> it was pretty nuts. That's, oh my god, that's a dog shit ruling. <laughs> three dogs. Uh, <laughs> so it's like seven, like, right? You can chain it to be seven total. Because that doesn't add three. It like, replaces the third one mm -hmm. with three. Whatever it is. I don't know. It's it's bonkers. So you can go up to then, you can go up to, yeah, seven, I think. Seven. Does the cards in discard pile stay total? So, like, you do a search for 11 and 12 and then 13? Yes. Or yes. Do yes. Because it's 11, 12, 13, because the instances are different. And you Every single card. Yep. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Watching him live this <laughs> You can it's also gra you can Gregor three times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But uh, it's some but it somehow so doesn't work with Tywin. Because Tywin's a single card. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> it's so dumb. Like Tywin's the only cool interaction it could have, and it's just like no. You can't have the fun one, have all the stupid ones. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yep, correct. At I Isle Worlds, at I Worlds, I was playing uh, Stark versus this, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Catlin is so stupid." I was like, <laughs> "Get out of here!" <laughs> she says twice per round. <laughs> it's a fair card. So, like with, with Corpse Lake, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, right? No, no, like, that doesn't say the instance of pillage. Though. Correct, just, yeah. So, like, that's that's fair with Corpse Lake. Yeah. But, like, I don't know how you go from discarding a card using pillage to discarding three cards using pillage becoming <laughs> three separate pillages. Yep. <laughs> that's fucking...
fucking stupid. Hey, Brad, wouldn't it be great if it was templated in a clear way that you could <laughs> just read the card and understand that that's how it works? I have to today. Don't talk to me about templates. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on. We've, we've, we've complained enough oh. about Scouting Vessel, which I'm sure we'll complain about in future episodes as well. Yep. Next, Dampier. Oh, baby. Legit. <laughs> he is too <laughs> legit to quit. Everyone card draw on top everyone, of card draw. Everyone who says Catelyn is busted just hasn't seen Jesse start playing Drown God yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, love that, like, this card dropped. This card's, like, announced. I say this card's insane in Drown God. Everyone's like, I don't see why you would ever play this over the three drop. And it's like, what? sure. <laughs> A deck where all you have to do is draw and play cards, like, this right. card is busted. I think, I think Jesse, like, I was initially skeptical because, like, I think a lot of people who won games of Drown God, like, the three dropped Aaron was crucial to your game plan. At least it was in my experience playing the deck. Like, he really let me, gave additional redundancy to the dead pile stuff. Dead, uh, dead pile stuff, excuse me. But just the cards, once you play with him once in a Drown God deck, you're like, oh. Oh, I see. I don't need the, <laughs> I don't need the dead pile bullshit anymore because I just have all the cards. Correct. Like, yeah. Everyone's like, "Oh, the best, uh, the best list is H. R. D. Doggers ribs," and it's like, "No, it's not." I have a question. Sure. If, if you pillage a card with Mulan and you pillage their scouting vessel and you take it <laughs> and then just nope them, you uh, really win the game if they have a scouting vessel and their discard pile and you have a Euron. Probably. <laughs> yeah. That that's makes. I mean. So. Game. So, so 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 that's actually a really interesting question. When does it enter? When does the location? Well, it's an interrupt. Yes. Back scouting vessel. On the second one, you'd react and do three cards. Take back scouting vessel, and you just keep moving it with itself because they're all reactions. Your run isn't once around, is he? No. Okay, so you would go infinite and mill them. If they have a scouting vessel in their discard pile, you just win the game. Yeah. Because you trigger his reaction first and take your scouting vessel, then you trigger scouting vessel's reaction and mill them three, and then take trigger. Well, reaction. well, scouting vessel is an interrupt, not a reaction. Does that oh, change okay. it? Yeah, sure. I think that, that stops it. I think. Okay. But it's, so if you have no one, wait, a year on you go in. So the, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. The question is when do the when do the when does the location enter play? So does it enter play still within the react the interrupt window? So let's say. You trigger your own scouting vessel and you throw your opponent's scouting vessel in there, right? As right. as the second card. So when you're on the third card, you s trigger your on, steal the scouting vessel, and then is it in play immediately? And then as a interrupt to that third card, you can trigger a new scouting vessel. Uh, like when did it, when did, or or if it's the first card or if it's already in there? Oh, I see. Like, so if you're reacting to the, like the first instance of extra pillage, yes, maybe, yeah. So, yeah. so like, like maybe you can. Vessel, mill three, trigger the first one to get their scouting vessel with Euron. The second one you trigger the scouting vessel that you took to do three more, <laughs> and then the third one you just use Euron to take back scouting vessel again, and then you just keep looping. So if you have a scouting vessel and a Euron and they have a scouting vessel in their discard pile, you just win the game. Brad even returned to the game for five <laughs> seconds. We broke it. <laughs> well, I mean, the problem is there's... Thank God is... Grazer doesn't have to play the beer at Thrones War. <laughs> I mean, like, it it's... To be how that's ruled, right? I don't know. I mean... If, if you get three single reactions from Euron, the first one takes back scouting vessel. The yeah. second one... You just mill them, right. It's well, just the mill. It has to. It just should... In infinitely loop at that point. If it yeah. creates a new instance of pillage, which it does, then it's going to create an opportunity to both react and interrupt every time. So yes, it should. That should work. I mean, as I understand the ruling, yeah, I think you just mill your opponent like that. You just, you know, you show them, look, I can do this 50 times. Let's 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 just oh. shake hands. boys. <laughs> 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 I mean, to be fair, you have to be played against Greyjoy. Uh, and there's you no have way to pillage a scouting vessel. Scouting vessel. No, they just have to have used. Well, yeah, sure. If they only right. really have a scouting vessel anywhere in their discard pile, you just you just go off. Yeah. <laughs> so in the mirror, if you're both playing scouting vessel, which because Ash is broken, you will be. The Greyjoy mirror will be decided by who gets Euron and pillages their opponent first. In my in my opinion, uh, I think people apparently. who play Greyjoy mirrors deserve it. <laughs> in my opinion, you don't get to choose the rage right here. I'm playing great. Oh, so in the chat, they're saying it's not infinite. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? 
Because for it's triggered once for each instance, but it's only triggered after all three are discarded. Okay, sure. Why does it work? Uh, he said it triggers once for it. I don't know. What did you say, Glazer? Uh, okay, so since they're reactions, they're triggered after the interrupt window after is closed. all interrupts. Got oh, it. okay. Yep, that's how it's saved. So you're on as the reaction, and Scotting Vessel is an interrupt. So all interrupts happen before reactions. So, so all three instances will happen. So it's basically all three reactions all three. would happen. No, 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 no. So like, if I interrupt happens, it happens first, and then interrupt happens, Scouting Vessel mills them three. So now I go to reactions. You're on reacts and puts a Scouting Vessel in play. Second reaction happens. Doesn't that come? Second interrupt. Again. So so what what they're saying is basically the whole three cards is have to resolve like that. So you could the only reason you could if a if you see another scouting vessel is since it's an interrupt you can trigger it again but Euron's a reaction so all everything that's triggered from those interrupts has to resolve then you okay. can trigger the reaction and you can trigger that reaction three times because or six times or whatever because it's created three or six or twelve or twenty instances of pillage sure right but that's a whole separate action window from the interrupts that we're creating it. So there's no opportunity for you to put the location into play, according to what people are saying in chat. Sure. Okay. That, would, that makes sense. Yeah, I was just making sure, because I was like, that's pretty bad. But even if they have, like, if you get one or two scouting vessels, you'll just plow through their deck in, like, seconds. And sure. if you can stand and reuse Euron, you can really shred that deck. Yeah, like, yeah. fast. Yeah, it make, it does the, make the Greyjoy mirror is, way more yeah, high variant. They have their discard file. So if you make like two two challenges with Euron, you'll probably mill them like six to nine cards, depending on how many scouting vessels they had. Right. Yeah. I mean, you'll get like twenty triggers with Euron. <laughs> All right, we should move on. All right. Next card. Where were we? So this thing happened with a uh, Drowned God, with thanks to Dant Pair the other day. I played. I got um. Go what's that stupid location? Car holdout. Turn one against Drowned God. I still lost. He didn't blow up my car hold. He just drew so many cards that he was able to see all three of his little one drop kill it to gain power things and do that 15 goddamn times. <laughs> yeah, why not? Sounds like he grinded a game out. He deserved the win. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drown God. So Drown God's real dumb. Uh, and fine. Give, giving it draw, it, like Jesse's going to win worlds with Drown God if we don't restrict this. Nah, I won't. Yeah, right. What are you winning worlds with, then? No, he's going to bubble with Klansmen. Like, <laughs> got him, boys! Have <laughs> you played Klansmen see a blood? He's not going to win that. worlds. He's going to bubble with the Klansmen. Uh. <laughs> All right. Number two on the list is Balon. Oh, I hate this card. Balon is real, <laughs> real, real dumb with Ford and Crown of Gold. And why you play Miranis Market, like, and never forget to trigger it. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> Crown, next action. <laughs> Miranis Market. Like, you better see that market before you see the ground. And you better be running three market now. Because otherwise, they're going to burn something to death of yours every single turn. Yeah, but what sucks is you'll use the market to, to get the crown out, which means you didn't use them to stop the number one card on your list from from just destroying your board like yeah. they just they just pile up too many good things to wreck you from your discard pile that like there, there are not enough markets in the world to, to stop it all why on earth does balon have renown and pillage because <laughs> he's Balon. oh are we on balon now is this what i meant he yeah, yeah. oh did we complain about the vince interaction yet because that's annoying what's what's the vince interaction where you steal your opponent's characters and murder them with oh, Vince. Oh, and Vince them? No, I forgot. I noticed that the other <laughs> that day. That is nice. That's yeah. the most obnoxious thing. Like, it's just so annoying. Like, no, no, every no, time no. it's happening to me, I've been like, oh, yeah, no, 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 that's no, the no. thing they no, can do. More, more annoying is when they steal your ward, steal your active dude, <laughs> yeah. and Vince it. And then they can do that every turn. Do you know Baylani steals a card from your opponent's discard pile? <laughs> So you can steal something and then Vince your own Balon, so you keep it. No, no, no. You don't Vince right. your Balon. Vince you don't Vince your shit. Balon. You Vince the... So, so, Jesse, this is what I think. Like, they pull your Catelyn int Intrigue Challenge, turn one, that you weren't able to play. 
Then they trigger Balon, steal Catelyn, murder her with Vince, and... Oh. Mm -hmm. and they use Vince from their discard to, to murder your best characters, characters that are, that are oh, in the discard good. pile. It's super... It's, oh, it's a very powerful interaction when you're the Greyjoy it's player. Like still, it's like still a character with Balon, and then they just, like, Vince from their dead pile to kill it. Because yeah. they control it. Because Vince can come into play and kill a character. It's just good. They can it's... do it with dro like any any card, right? Anything. It's like, oh, let me take yeah. your Drogon, use it, wreck your board. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to shuffle that Drogon. I'm going to kill it instead. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, it's uh, like, no! It's frustrating. It is extremely that's frustrating. That's annoying to me, but I don't... Yeah, that's annoying. It, it's, it, the, it, it's the 50 little things you can do with him that's completely obnoxious. So I, mean, I think... <laughs> he's the card and not the Vince interaction more than any other that I want a role change in the game. Like, uh, I think you hey, should be able to... We just all play Citadel Archivists, guys. I, I think... Yeah. That, yeah, really. They uh, gave us the answer in the same box. I oh, yeah, that, yeah. Except he has wait, to on, enter the discard pile from play. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Not from play. Is it... No, he does not. No, no. no he yeah, it just has to be yeah. tossed there. Oh, okay. Yep. Pillage there, anything, yeah. It's real funny when he's pillaged there and all of a sudden, like, on the Iron Throne, it's just like the discard piles are all empty. And you're like, wait, well, wait, just, just happen. <laughs> it doesn't, like, tell you. It just happens real fast. Um, but no, I think you should be able to play uniques that your opponent has stolen. I know that's not super thematic, but I've stopped caring. <laughs> We're at a point with steal between this and new wall that, like, and... if your opponent steals your unique, you should just be able to play another copy. It's like, It should be like they just had it in their deck. I don't care anymore. I think that ruling is dumb. It's outlived its usefulness, and it's bad for the game. It is very obnoxious. Sure, um, I don't think it'll ever get changed, but it will that never would get be changed. Either, but I, but I think it should be. Like there's so much steel now. I would agree, just because it's it's so ubiquitous. Um, I just the thing. I just hate the play patterns that Balon promotes. Just he's such a fiddly card. So they go through your discard pile. They pick a character. The character comes into play. If they don't do anything to that character, you then shuffle him in. You shuffle it or location, excuse me. You then shuffle it into your deck. It's just like a lot of like zone moving for a card. That's just really. It's like fine on the Iron Throne, but just really annoying to play against him. In, I mean, in, it's it's, in real it's life. also really really annoying. Like if they're if Greyjoy is going second. Like, it's really hard to military them until they've used Balon. That's because the they're just killing all your shit, right? <laughs> like, it's just... Like, they're just like, all right, I'm just going to bring your shit in, chump block there, that thing dies. Okay, that thing dies. Okay, that okay. thing dies. Like, this card is extra dumb with dumb sauce. Like, this is the second best seven cost you've ever gotten in a box. After, After Mace. who? Mace. He's better than Mace. He's better than Mace alone, He's not better than Mace with uh, with Hightower. He's not better than the Mace in the context of Mace's house. I mean, I think the difference is Mace is an engine, right? That went, like, Balon is just a good card. Mace is an engine that built an entire archetype around him that dominated the game for a whole summer. It was so good, I think, I think 11 people brought it to Gen Con. I think he served his time. I think it's time we just get Mace back, boys. <laughs> I just want to be able to air Preach the it, air brother. Preach it. Macy. Preach it, brother. Bring it back. I want to be Mason people. I want to... Mace kind of does one or two things. Like, Balon does everything. Like, everything is open to him, you know? He's just... It's just this huge world of possibilities. You, you are currently forgetting exactly how busted Mace was. Oh, I'm not forgetting. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mace like, gains one hour at, at an alarming like, rate. I got oh, it. No, but... and, and does the blinking <laughs> bullshit and everything else. Like, right, I but it's, it's all the game power. It's Mace, all just Mace was power. always his own engine in a way that, like, like they're basically playing Mace decks with Big Cat, but, like, Big Cat <laughs> needs other cards to work, and Mace was just like, no, I got this. <laughs> yeah, he was a fun card to play. <laughs> yeah, I hate, he was so boring. All right, number, number one on the list is we take rest Westeros, oh. which I think is the most aggressively statted, statted plot. Oh, my God. Why does this have five gold and nine initiatives? Why does it have Why? six reserves? It's like, you know what? And slap it with some hot reserve, too. <laughs> Why, Why not? Wait, but Why can it get your own locations back? Like... <laughs> Card's not... I... I don't like this card. Why don't you? <laughs> oh, all right, this is good. This is good. Uh, let's let's pour some cold water on the on the hate that's about to flow out of everybody cold. else. Jesse, why do you not? Why do you think this card's bad? 
So nine initiative in the game is just insanely busted. No card should have nine initiative. Oh, on top of a right? oh, I thought you of... that was bad. No, I hate the card. Okay. Um, I, you already have a house that your non-limited economy gives you extra initiative, and we're giving you <laughs> nine initiative, so you get to choose when to go, which is just stupid. Um, you get your choice out of either discard pile, which just doesn't make sense. Um, and for some reason it gives you five gold. <laughs> this card could literally say one gold and it would still go in every great toy deck. It wouldn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Compared to Rise of the Kraken, by the way, which no, is a powerful I, card that pushes great joy themes, so. but is very balanced and has been since it was released. So much. Yeah. I mean, have, like, you ever, have you ever truly thought about like the plot, like the, the in faction plot cards and just like realized how bad Bear has gotten. <laughs> it's like, the worst. think about it. Like, every in-house plot is at least playable, yeah. except Bear is on the. One of Lannisters is bad. They're both One. They're bad. Both All right. Lines no. of the Rock is Lines of the Rock is bad in Clansman. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, it's good in some decks. This is this the seven will be in plot. every Greyjoy deck forever. 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 Is like there a the single world? Greyjoy deck that does, besides Drown God, so I guess there is one, that does not want it? You might yeah. even throw one in for Drown God, just to be like, eh, we'll no, you won't. no, you <laughs> won't. <laughs> so you do not have a, I promise you do not have plot slots in Drown God. You don't God. have the slot? All right, fair enough. You're protecting everything you can. So, the worst thing this does, the absolute worst thing <laughs> this does in a regular Greyjoy deck, is just go get your Iron Mines or Scouting Vessel deck. And that's still completely busted. Like, if it just got your own stuff, it still goes in every Greyjoy deck. I agree. Yeah. Like, well, it's, it's just it also devalues intrigue challenges and reserve, so you can do things like a, just a common play pattern could be just like turn one, open, all right, discard one of your econ cards to reserve, and then if there's just nothing good and you don't have a good play, okay, well, I'll play this and get my econ back. It, they did okay. one thing right with this, and I think exactly one thing. Plot deck limit one. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Like Black it should be black deck limit zero. zero. <laughs> never been are we gonna discuss? Ed. Are we gonna discuss another card in here that did not say plot deck limit one, and it definitely should have. We, we'll get there. We're, we're not on plots. Plots will be after we talk about the other factions. Let's talk about other factions cards. Okay. All right. Let's let's make Roy and uh, Roy and Jesse sad and say. Vyman's really good. Vyman is it's not Vyman. Vyman is really good. He's fine. He's I fine. don't think so. <laughs> I actually really don't like the slot form. Is super tough. Mm -hmm. I, I like think... I I like him a lot more than the rest of the team does. And like I played with him and like <sighs> he might get you like one or two more power mm -hmm. in a certain like style of deck. I would say, but like in that deck, you're you're probably slotting out a cheaper Lord or Lady, and that's probably not the right call. <laughs> like, if you're asking me if it's Maester Vyman or Hoster is better, Hoster is insanely Host, better. Hoster is way better. I mean, I think that, I think he's the problem. I mean, Jesse and I had, what, what an hour-long discussion about this card the other day? And yes. I just think that Stark decks are really tight particularly really good Stark decks that I think would want to abuse this interaction. And I think there's just better cards for it overall that are better across matchups rather than a card that I think is a win more card. He's really strong, but I so think So if just... you're, if you're playing this Maester Vyman, you're not playing like, so the slot would be like a, th like taking away from three X Rickon or three X Mira or like, you know, brands and you're stuff, and like I just, Rickon? that's ridiculous. You're ridiculous. no, it's not any any. I I am not any Stark deck, and any Banner Wolf deck that's not running three Rickon is wrong. It is wrong. He is insanely, insanely busted. Does he stop Sea of Blood? Yes. Yes, he stops the. He stops. Then, yeah, the you run three. <laughs> you run three. He stops. He stops the right. You get he the stops, token, but no. Search. No, you don't. He stops Heir to the Iron Throne. Yeah. yeah, and here air is a good card. He allows you to trigger a one cost air to the Iron Throne. <laughs> he is busted. Yeah. 
All right, he's, let's move. He's just. That's, <laughs> That's why we run one X Shaggy Dog. Yeah, don't forget, Wyman's fighting bad. for that one X Shaggy Dog spot too. Right. So, all right. all right, let's continue to talk about bad cards that I just like because it's Ryan Jones 2.0 is two points and click. Once in a while, even though you are wrong about ramen, you are right about other things. All right, um, we're going to talk about like three or four more bad cards that I just think are cool. I really like Sir Talbert Tal Tali, whatever his last name is. Oh, the Talbert location Sherry? guy? The, 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 yeah, he, the Tyrell Talbert Sherry guy. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. I think he's I mean, really like another Tyrell Knight. Yeah, he's a pretty <laughs> Tyrell Knight. Yeah. I mean, he's like just him. like fine, but like. Tyrell's kind of in a tough spot, and I don't it think he really doesn't help him get out of it. It's yeah, not it doesn't him out of their hole at all, really. I don't know. Hashtag Combo. free mace. <laughs> Do not free mace. <laughs> right. ne next kind of bad card that I like. Polo. Polo. Oh, my God. And Targ I... Sea of Blood, I actually think he's a really good one of. Wait, yeah. wait. Rocky Sea of Blood, you put him in there. He's Blood Rider. Like, you can oh cheeky God. search for him and do fun stuff. So, but... I really, if I was a better person, I would be keeping a note of all of these episodes of these podcasts that I do where Glazer is like, this card's garbage. Jesse, cut it. We shouldn't ha have anything to do with this card. It's going to not be in the final deck when we get there. This is from the White Book episode where we built the Targ Sea of Blood deck. And Glazer's <laughs> like, Coho or. Go ho! Why would we run this card? This card's I still bad. think he's kind of bad. No, we're just doing. We're just doing like five bad cards. We're doing like four or five bad cards because I want to do ten. Kaholo's uh, cheeky good. He's not like broken good. He's just cheeky good. Like he's a, Targ has he's, better cards. So to here's play. the problem. He's a fair card in Targaryen. <laughs> yeah. There's not that many fair cards to play. <laughs> so he gets on the cutting block real easily. But... Like he belongs in that Dothraki blood rider little niche, right? right? That like he's 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 fine there in fact you'd want to put him in there because he fits the themes and he's gonna trigger off the other cards in your deck like he he's fine there you're not gonna throw him in a burn deck of course not like he's he's just good in the little niche that he's in um he's dope come on you gotta i like him all right next a card i like that i'm not sure is good uh the blood royal i think oh no that martell attachment yeah. <laughs> the one that card... gives renown <laughs> it's unique, Stealth. right? Isn't it unique? It, like, Stealth and play one. Stealth and my, my very, very, very selfish reasons will not allow me to talk about how good this card is. Yeah? What I mean, are you playing this in? Stark Sun? No, it only goes oh. on Martell characters. Oh, oh right. God. He's well, got, yeah. Stark he's got Sun has Martell giant, He's got another he's, giant Viper deck, doesn't he? He's protecting, he's protecting Alejandro, I'm assuming, is what's going on here. So, um, this, this card is really good. This card is niche and goes in one deck, but this card is very good. Oh, great combos back. <laughs> I don't. Right. It's fair. It's very fair. But it's yes, it's good. Okay. All right. Since Jesse won't tell us what's so good <laughs> about it on the podcast we're on, uh, let's talk about Fury. This card's good. I played against it this week, and this card is actively good. I froso'd this over uh, Red Keep. Wow. This card with Stannis is actively good. So Stannis it... needed a bump, though, right? Like, he needed yes. something to make him freaking good. This card is good. Like, in, in a specific style build, this card is very good. We're talking about Fury or Kohane? Fury. 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 Right. Fury is next. Fury. Um, so, it's not super duper good against Martell. And Night's Watch. I don't even right. know what Fury does off the top of my head. I gotta look that up. Uh, why it's a warship, it's two cost. Why you control Stannis, he gains intimidate. After you win a power challenge and you'll Fury to choose a character location, move one power from that card to your faction card. Ooh. I mean Martell plays characters with a renown now. Mm, one Martell build does. And the renown is sort of incidental. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, Fury seems solid enough. Yeah, it's just a fun card. Like it's like Barra keeps getting these really fun balanced cards, and everyone else is like, I can do 18 things for zero gold. <laughs> but like, I like Fury. Like, Fury is a card that's in a game I like more than this version of the game. Like, yep. Barra Worships has always been kind of like this horrible little side piece of the designer. So <laughs> it happened in first edition also. And I, hopefully, it does go somewhere someday. 
but I feel, like, I feel like Perrin needs better cards than like more warships. Kareen is really good. Like, Kareen Kareen so fancy. is yep. really good. It's just they don't have enough warships. Like, thank God they didn't put him in Greyjoy. I mean, I think he's a Greyjoy stag yeah. character. Yeah, he's a good character. Yeah, he's real good. Mm-hmm. You got to kneel, yeah, kneel him and a uh, warship. Can... The, lo- the location and character is pretty sweet with no restrictions. Mm-hmm. Any uh, face. And you can just get him a lot if yeah, you want. Yeah, he's like five costs, though. Like, it's not cheap. But his body's not garbage, Again, so like he's, he's a he's a remnant of a game that's well designed, right? Like there's a real cost to doing things with Corrine, Seth, Mantis, and Fury, as opposed to I don't know Maiden's Bane or Scouting Vessel, which are just like we break things. We're not balanced at all. Like I just really like the design of these two barrier cards, and I wish that like this was the kind of game we're playing. Me too. Barrier just needs more warships. Then he would be really fantastic. Yeah. Um. All right, Jesse. My mind is my weapon. Go. <laughs> uh, it's very good. That's it. Um, That's all you got. I like it a lot. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's not. I mean, it's really good. I mean, it goes in. I think every Lannister deck, except yeah. maybe. Maybe not crossing, but I don't know how to build that. But I mean, I don't I cross, do, crossing probably doesn't need it. It's just a fair card, like, but it's very good. Like, I love the art on it. Um, oh, we're pretending cards have art again. I always pretend cards have art. I was actually thinking when I brought the card up to read it again, Jesse, that this art was garbage. So <laughs> it's kind of like a flock of seagulls, kind of like the the hair the hair twist. I, I dig it. The best. Uh, the best art in the in this box is Old Grey Gold and Priest of Old Wick because they're the same person. <laughs> it's just like the, the photographer moved like one foot over. Correct. Um, the art yeah, is kind of garbagey in this in this. Do you box play this in Clansman? I do. Oh yeah. Who are you using it on? What? Who are you using it on? I know. I know the answer to that. I'm just making you say it because we have viewers. This card is good. All right. Um, as, as as soon as war is over, I'm playing Gunther, Son of Gurn, Sir Pound Sticks. Just so everyone knows, <laughs> I'm running three of each. And... Slash my mind is my weapon, right? You, so you so that means that you Gunther. should be you should be recruiting Aaron Glazer to your Jesse's Name Day uh, team go. if you're on. No. If you, no, 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 no. Dra- dra- draft me to Martell, please. Like, I, d- just stop stop putting me in other houses. I like playing Martell. I kind of hate almost everything else in this game. So, like, just draft me to Martell. But, um, Gunther, son of Gurn, is... I'm going to be Sir Pouncing the shit out of that on Iron Gurn for a while. I'm just going to chuck a... your hand immediately with Gunther. Gunther's a very good card. It's a really good he's, card for Sir Pounce. He's a three Evan Lannister decks. I mean, I, I, I... In a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he is good with Sir Pounce. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, with yeah. Sir Pounce. It's a negative three cards if you can get both challenges off. Or four cards if you get the other stupid thing out. Like he's really, really good with big Cersei. Cool. Alright. Then number two, I think is my favorite card in this box. Carhold. I think Carhold is super. Carhold is very good for the game. Carhold's really healthy. I like that card a lot. Uh, I think Carhold is really healthy for the game in a vacuum. I think it's unhealthy for the game when we get to the number one card on Aaron's list, I'm sure. But we need reasons for people to play Winter Plots again, right? Like, we need... They're so out of the game. Like, they're so far out of the game. We need a reason for them to come back. And this this, this could... This is one piece that can help them come back, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's also just so good. Like, the game has gotten too, like, swingy fast, where if you just get a bunch of power early, there's not always anything your opponent can do. And, like, if you just plop car hold, it's very often, like, huh. Also, Drown God is broken. So, like, doing something to Drown God seems really good. Yeah. Yeah. And number one is bad for the game. It's a three of in every Martell deck forever, but it's really bad. It's Istvan's Desert Raider. 
Jeez. The card is terrible for the game. That smirky face, that... too, like he knows it's bad for the game <laughs> on this yeah. art. Yeah. It's and... real strong. And it's busted with car hold. It's, it's busted without car hold. With car hold, it's just strips. Like, it's Greyjoy level busted. Um, I think, yes. It is top three most busted cards in the game, maybe. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's not more busted than Flea Bottom or Drown God Fanatic. Correct. So, but, like, the thing is, is, like, this, like, this card would be still insane. But, like, like, this card is better with Flea Bottom. You know what's ridiculous about this? It's somehow better than it was in first edition, and it was so broken in first edition. It was very strong in first edition, but Prize was more balanced with this card yeah. than... Yeah. Um, he's just so sticky. It's hard to get rid of him. Like, he shouldn't be hard to get rid of with these stats, but he's really hard to get rid of, well, which makes he, him frustrating. He does the frustrating thing that makes your opponent's resets more attractive to them because they get refills of this, and then it makes your resets against Martell decks less attractive. Mm -hmm. So you're just so you're just in this like grip of like your play patterns continue to just further what the Martell player wants to do in a way that is like borderline obnoxious with the previously existing Martell cards, but this just pushes it over. It's like the damned if you do, damned if you don't play pattern is just like fuck this. Like why am I playing this game? Like you're just gonna you're just gonna grind me to death, particularly in Martell Wolf running co uh car hold. It's just like I've had opponents just stop making military against me because like they don't want to deal with this. And then you just pop out a bolt and flare, shrug and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> like I've killed my own Desert Raiders over things that like are on their side of the board that I could. Just because yeah, you like don't care. <laughs> Yeah, third of activation is insane. It's just like I wanna be able to keep taking your power icons and getting my power back. <laughs> Good. Yeah, Desert Raider should be real, real restricted. <laughs> real, real banned. Uh, return it to the return it to the FFG. Everyone should just <laughs> mail their copies to. Uh, I mean, everyone should mail this. Everyone should literally just light their copy of this box on fire. <laughs> we should all agree to pretend it didn't happen. This game was in a really decent place like two months ago, and then they were like, "Here's a box. Nothing can be fun." <laughs> You don't get a nice game. No nice game. But I want Koholo. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, you can keep Koholo. Everything we else... can keep all the plots except for we take Westeros. No, you can't keep any of the plots. Not Holy air? Shit. Maybe not air. We can get rid of air. Maybe not yeah, air. Yeah, we can't, we can't uh, keep let's see. Secrets of the Conclave. It's too busted, guys. Uh, definitely, like let's see. One, two... I want Vanquish. Oh god. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. All let's these do, plots are just Let's do neutral let's do our neutrals. Hey, is Reckless any good? I don't think so. I can't I want it to be though. It. Uh um uh oh. It's interesting. I don't know if it's good. Right? I think it's interesting and I don't know where it goes or what Is there enough it. stuff out there that like punishes a lot opens up consistent things that open up forcing your opponent to constantly be attacking with a character like can so really I I tried this. Um, it was really funny. I don't know if it was good because I haven't been able to play a lot of it, but I played like uh, four or five games with my Nightwatch nice cohort deck the other day, and I was putting this on people once I got my setup to make them do challenges into me to make me trigger Lord Commander. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is okay, cute. <laughs> it's cute. It's not good, but it's cute. Yes. No, but it's funny. Uh, uh Rogue Wildling, which is the... Is it Val that jumps in Wildlings? Mm -hmm. Or is it the other one? Val jumps, Dala draws. Okay, so yeah. Rogue Wildling with Val is completely insane. I don't think it's super good without Val, but with Val, like... It's real expensive in a deck that needs money. Not, real expensive not, in a deck that needs money, sorry. Not, not with Val. Yeah, I mean, but he clogs up your setups, too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I just don't. I, I think I don't know. Did we talk about bad cards already? <laughs> All right, uh, here, Skip Jeffy. Let's let's make Jeffy <laughs> happy. Citadel Archivist, go. That's good. I think, I, actually think it, I think it's good too. 
I think it's a fine in some decks. Like in a team tournament, I couldn't play Isle of Raven, so I played three of these. Nice. I, re I really, 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 really wish we could, uh, like Citadel Archivist came with an action that discards itself. Sure, I mean... Like, I think that would be totally fine. Yeah, I like it. It's cool. It's I a mean, cool card. It's yeah. Card. I just... Yeah, he's, he's not... He doesn't fit in every deck, because not every deck can, like, correct. Yeah, I don't discard think he, him. I don't think he fits on a lot of decks. If he was also... Yeah, or died. I think if he yeah. either entered the discard pile or died... Or dead be, pile. Yeah, or dead pile. When he leaves play. It could, it could even be that. Like... I mean, I get. I guess maybe there's some broken possible combo that this is trying to avoid with what's that card, the Doomsday mission card, from Essos. yeah, mission, mission to from Essos. Essos, sort of thing. The Danny, they're attempting to like template him in a way that prevents that from happening or makes it extremely difficult to do. But I don't mm. know. Mm. I wish he was. I wish he was more flexible in that way. Yeah, if you could just use a for Snow or a Velardo Harris and just pop him back and trigger him. Maybe he's Can too we, good then. I don't know. I mean, but I mean, it's shuffling, Ness like... But the question Mission is... Mission Nessos removes it all from the game and shuffles your discard in. So, like... Eh. Yeah. Can we talk about the worst card in the box? Uh, <laughs> we got we got two more neutral cards, dude. Well, I do want to say, well, like... I feel like shuffling your opponent's entire discard pile, like, I don't think that's a... And your own. Your own. Both, and your own. Time. I'm shuffling both players. Like, I don't feel like that's an interaction that is super NPE. I mean, there are obviously decks that require the discard pile to function but they're abusing right. it so i feel like this is a fair answer it's not removing the cards from the game it's just simply requiring okay you've got a reset you now actually really have to play around mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and not just sit with this awesome discard pile for the entire game aka sure. target stark and stark next up super cool card not as good as i want it to be when i woke uh, i think this card is very good I think it's good. I don't think it's... I thought it was going to be, like, bust, like as good as a pinch. And it's no, it, it's no pinch. Yeah, I think no in, pinch. I think I'll see a blood deck should be playing one of those. Yeah, yeah but one. One is fine. Are you losing a lot of military challenges? Or no, but one? you can just choose to, to get rid of something annoying. Uh, you definitely want to do it <laughs> Lanny, see a blood. Yeah. Yeah, right, because it evil. doesn't it work with Gregor? Like the mountain, yep. you just throw it, throw the one you want on top, and be like, "Hmm, wonder what I'm gonna flip over with this pillage." Mm -hmm. yeah. When I card. and number one neutral card, Star Sept is awesome. Ugh, broken good, not broken, but really, really good. It's just, oh, it's, just it's a fair card. It's yeah, a good I card. I think it's reasonably okay. You're giving your opponent a ton of power to blank him for a phase. Like, if it was just a power bank um, card, some decks would still play it if it didn't even have its freaking milk on demand ability. Like, it's. Because if it's a power bank card, it's basically like Street of. Whichever the Street is, right? Except better, because you don't have to win by anything. You just win yeah. the power challenge. Yeah, you can yeah. play both if you even wanted to. Like, it's. Right, like you can run it with honey wine. You can run it with. Uh, yeah, it's like you can run more than one, just power bank card now, and that's it's always like risky, but man. I mean, it's risky, but like. That goes fast. It's, this card is it's very plus one power good per power challenge with upside. This card Why? is very good in melee. I wish this was a bear card. I, I mean, think it is a bear card. It yeah, definitely no, is a bear card. Yeah. Build, builders can play this card. Watch yeah, builders do it. I mean, I'm not, but like it's doable. Like you can, you can run it out of builders for sure. I mean, slots are still pretty tight in builders, like for neutral three cost locations that don't do anything in challenges. I mean, but giving the power is fine. I mean, the extra. Gonna win power nice. challenges, right? Hmm? Most of the time, like, yeah. If you can go from, you know two with the wall to three with the wall in this and then get that kind of clutch blank if you need it. I don't know. I, I think it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Plots. Plots. All right. Here we go. Hey, we're going to start with the bad one. I think Secret of the Conclave is good. Is that the one that looks at the top card of the... Do you play with the top card of the... No. Uh, no. After, the, after the challenge phase, 4417. After the challenge phase begins, look at the top five of your deck, add one to your hand, discard one, and put the others back on top of your deck in any order. 
At least you don't have to shuffle your fucking deck. Um, no. You get one in your hand. And you, you stack your deck. You choose what to discard. And you put the others in whatever order you want. Yeah, like, that's that's very strong. Like, like, also think about, like, with a Marine. That's uh, Chris Lavin's idea. Full Ooh, deck. stack your deck for the Marine. Oh, so you could actually use Marine in challenges confidently. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Hey, you can pop your Citadel Archivist with the you can, discard one. You, you, can, you can randomly get a Masande in play. You can, uh, I mean, true. like, I don't think that's even the only place that's necessarily good. It's, it's pretty good in um, any of the factions that really use their discard pile, right? So it could be good in Targaryen, Stark, Martell, uh, uh, Martell. Gray, uh, Tyrell, probably as well. Um particularly with Tyrell having the, the old town and having the pump girl that keys off the top card of your deck. Yeah, exactly. And so just look, Stark, Stark doesn't run a ton of it anymore, but they have multiple draw cards that look at the top card of your deck. Yeah. And I just think Mark, I mean, Ty, uh, Stark wouldn't necessarily mind the filtering. Mm -hmm. Um, but the You're question playing is flea bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you do run in situations that Stark where it's hard to get characters. If you're not, if you don't have Wyman, obviously it's not always easy to get characters into your discard pile. So, right. So you know what this feels like to me? This feels like um, like in a first edition card that we'd all go, this is solid. I wish it was slightly better. And then we'd be like, oh, Knights of the Hollow Hill. Like so if we, yeah. so if Knights of the Hollow Hill does anything like it did in first edition, this will be cool in that. Those those four cost plots that don't see a lot of play will all become more interesting for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If they it's become. Like, Five, six, seven, or eight, or nine gold plots, or something, whatever it ends up being. You get all that. You get all that gold, and then it says draw a card, discard a card, stack your deck. Like Hell Hill would like that, right? It's just nuts. We look at four cost, or you know, four gold plots, and we're always like, ooh, mm, can I afford to have so little? Like, it just sucks. There's too I mean, much gold. Mm -hmm. Four gold, like it's weird to say this at this point in the game, but a four gold plot legitimately feels awkward, right? Um, in a way that. It didn't a year ago. Like we'll get to we'll get to the only drawback about a certain card that we're about to get to. Uh, I think in a little bit is that it has four gold, and that, it's kind of ridiculous to say that. I mean, it's it's number one, so we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, Jesse's not back because I want him to talk about He's coordinated back. attack. Oh, is he? He's right I'm there. Back. Nice. He's Sorry. Back. He walked away a second ago, and then I went to the other tab. All right, coordinated attack. Is that a good card, Jesse? It's not. <clears throat> oh, you couldn't make it work? No, I wanted to. I think it's got a home somewhere. Sure, I just can't figure it out yet. I haven't really been able to focus uh, on making it work, but it did not go over how I wanted it to with King Rob. Mm. Yeah, I don't think that's where it goes. I just think it's good in general. It's probably good in Targ, and that's annoying. Why did they give this card for reserve? Like, what? Because it's good. Is it that good? It's got eight it initiative, be. right? It's three, eight, one. Three cost. We got a we got a five nine one with six reserve in this in this stupid yeah. pot. But that's a that's well, a faction <laughs> only that gives them yeah. additional design space. Additional points to put design on the card. Design space. We take so I, I think space. Are you saying you I didn't want your on on a stick? Thanks to <laughs> Wait, thanks to Corset Design, it's not just you're on a stick. It works on your own but stuff. I know, I but know. I, um, so I think that because it was in the Corset, we've sort of become numb to just how good four challenges is. Like, four challenges is really strong. And the fact that this can give you five challenges is just mm -hmm. silly. Just silly. Five challenges with uh, is just scary. It is very strong in Targaryen with that the plot of the event that gives you two challenge phases. Cool. But of I mean, course it's just it's three like, gold, could, but could yeah, I don't think Targ Crossing would run it, but like that's kind of the home. Hmm. Maybe it's uh, just not gonna be Well right. with Targ you then suddenly you're running like five challenges with Drogo, like it gets it gets yeah. it could get a little bonkers. Yep, yep. Alright. Three, Vanquish the Unbelievers. Oh, fuck this card. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Why? Because of Free Folk. It's and I'm going to continuously say this. Free Folk uh, is busted. Nobody has figured out how busted it is. But someone, I believe in this competitive season, 
will solve free folk. I think the cards are there. You just have to find the right combination and the right play patterns. And I think that this card is going to significantly contribute to it. Just yeah. But it's not just free folk. Like you can, if you really want to make a dedicated Dothraki deck, like ooh, yeah, spicy. Like you can, you can do a lot of fun stuff with this, with this card. And it's limit one. Like I don't know. It's not gonna is it limit roll. One? Yeah, 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 isn't it? Yeah, yeah yes. it is. It's limit like, one, so yeah. I think I think I'm pretty sure you're wrong, Sid, and we're gonna yeah. revisit this. About Dothraki, or about it just being no, about too good? about it being just too good. Five eight two with a reserve of five is nuts. Yeah, so you're okay. So free folk, you can definitely do Dothraki. You could probably do Ironborn if you really Clansman. kind of are careful. Old Clansman, yeah. Drown God, Rangers. <laughs> no, this is not God. God. Rangers. Why is Ranger this a card? Now you're talking. Is wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I thought you didn't have deck eight slots or... that aren't support, God. like protecting your characters. You're telling you're you're asking me that this isn't already in my deck. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Are you naming something else and killing all your drown gods? <laughs> you could do whatever you want. Uh, I <laughs> named. I, see. I named the Dothraki. The wait, it, you dirty dog. Wait, you named Dothraki? Aren't you playing drown god? Yes, I win the game now. <laughs> <laughs> 50 power. <laughs> it also has 8 reserve, which is insanely good. Uh, eight, eight, I mean, 8 initiative, which is yeah, really good. Eight, 5 gold is very fair. It's true. Fair. I, I, so good. <laughs> At least it does have the winner of trade. Oh my gosh. If it had winner, <laughs> that would bring winner decks back. I mean, it can be Mabel. Alright. Uh, number two on the plot list. This one I actually think is really cool everywhere but Stark, where it's busted as fuck. Return to the fields. <laughs> this card is... Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it, it's like, hey, Stark, want to be reset-proof? Um, this isn't... I don't think so. Really? I mean, it's really? a 7, 6, I, I, 1, draw 3. Yeah, se I, it's, it's 7, 6, 1, draw 3, not plot deck limit 1. So, like... And then you've got at least one or two gold because Stark has solid economy. And just like, I can reflood the board immediately. I mean, Martell can cancel it. It's fine. Ridiculous. <laughs> uh, so the, the problem is, Martell has to really work to cancel it because it's got six goddamn initiative. Seems oh, good to man. Me. Martell has to work to win initiative? It, oh, it, I feel so it's, bad for Martell. Got, they have such got, a tough life. It's got a Arch cancel. cards suck. Yeah. It's not problematic against martel it's problematic when you're like i just gained two power plus now i have nine gold Seems it could be good. very strong uh -huh. two two power nine gold draw three cards have yeah, like, day. like stark plot decks were getting boring like suddenly they got they got interesting i'm okay with it this is by the way really really good in a deck that wants to cancel your plots martel Ward should be running this I think this card's really good. I, don't, I, I mean, I think the Stark implications are obvious, but I, I do think I, I do think say I, know, I do think it is a good reset protection in a variety of factions. Actually, I think it's, this card's real good in Drown God too. It's really good with a uh, House Dan Escort, who you just immediately remarshal. Yeah, I think there's a lot of interactions. People are gonna whine about the kind of deck that Jesse's been winning and with about it but i think they're and that's going to cause them to miss other cool interactions you can do with it in other factions i, I think it's i think it's really really like super duper strong and stark i think it's just very good elsewhere i think it's a good card i don't think it's busted or anything like that i, I think it's busted and stark i think re resetting is really hard in this game and, like, if resets are going to be a thing, cards like return from the field. Here's where I disagree with you. Um, resetting is really hard in this game unless you're playing squid cards. And, like, Greyjoy resets with minimal cost to itself. I mean, <laughs> sure. But, like, reset, yes, minimal resets cost. Resets have not mattered since the Tyrell box when they printed trade routes. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, this card doesn't oppressively, like, so, hurt resets. Like, resets don't didn't matter before this card. They don't matter now. Eh, it's the draw. Sure. It's the it's it's basically like it's, it's plus these gold a, also though it's just yeah. it's flexible it's, it's, it's really it's, flexible it's trade routes it's like I get trade routes esque gold plus three cards plus my regular draw plus I've kept a bunch of stuff out of the dead pile right but I I don't think here's why I put this about this guy I don't think that this is a control buster card I think this is a 
Greyjoy Buster card. I, I think... don't think it does anything to Greyjoy. I don't think Greyjoy gives a shit. Greyjoy just wants you off the board a... for a minute. I think... They're trying to control tempo. They don't care if it dies I, or not. But, I, but here's what you're saying. I think it gives factions an answer to Greyjoy that allows them to recover tempo much more easily while also protecting key characters when they're forced to, to keep up with Greyjoy to overextend into a Valor, which is the classic Greyjoy play pattern, right? Play a bunch of dudes, play, sa play saves, force them to overextend into your position, and then Valor them. And then you've it doesn't matter that you've got two zero 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 zero. You've captured the tempo, they can't recover it. Well, now three of my characters are not going to be permanently dead. I've drawn three cards, I've gained three gold, I'm in a position to, if I have one or two characters that I was able to save, keep up with the tempo that Greyjoy captured. I think that is where it is at its strongest. It's not so, a control killer, because I, I think... I, th I think trade routes basically already did that. Like, I would just time my 2-2-1 two, two, for that. Like, I think it, this, this is more powerful in factions that didn't have the saves that now you can't catch overextending the same way. Like, because I could catch Stark overextending if they didn't see the right things, and I can catch Stark overextending if they didn't see the right things. And, like, against Greyjoy, you couldn't, because, like, they just had 50 saves and fine. But, like, against Stark and Targ, like, you could, you could, like, if they didn't see a bunch of dupes early, like, you would just, like, they would have to play what they would see, and then you could bait them into whichever Valor you wanted and come back. And, like, if they just play this, you can no longer do that. Like, it's too good of an answer. It it reduces variance too much for for dupes. Because, like, now you just don't see your dupes, and you're like, all right, screw it. I'm going to draw three cards. I'll just see another copy. Like, I played this against a Targ the other day, who had, like, a Drogo and a Drogon and some other shit out. They played this, sacked it, drew three cards, had Marine drew three more, and then, like, they were literally back to the same board two seconds later. And it was just like, yep. I mean... There's literally nothing you can do about that. You're getting, you're seeing eight cards that turn with Marine. And you've got all the gold in the world to play everything you want. That's so, not good. It sounds to me that the problem is the Marine. I mean, <laughs> but like, hey, you're seeing it's a well balanced five, card. Oh, seeing, yeah, just, oh, until five. Throne Zor is over and then it's broken and should be restricted <laughs> for sure. But until then. <laughs> It's a well balanced and good well balanced, interactive, fun card. Yeah, yeah, super good card. Great yeah. play patterns. Just everybody, yeah. everyone loves well, how it's so good. So it. good. All Until right. Thrones War ends. Yeah. Let's jump off this. Let's jump <laughs> off this plot and move on. All to... right, let's talk about. Let's talk about your plot. My plot. Number one. <laughs> how Stark. Uh, uh, oh, air. Air is very strong. Um, I mean, it's not just not just Stark. It's also Lannister and Greyjoy. And Tyrell. And Tyrell. And sometimes Targ. I, I actually, mean, just ever talking about this time... the other day, it's not really Greyjoy, though. Greyjoy does have a lot of cheap lords. And yeah, they do. They just run newly made again. I mean, Tywin, like, get, like, this turns, I mean, getting Tywin turn one mm -hmm. is just hilarious, because it turns into a six gold plot. It's just, like, yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean... It's like, getting... oh no, I lost King Tommen. Correct. Um, I mean, I mean, it's good. In, it's good in Stark because they have a lot of cheap swords and ladies. I think it's real. I think it's really good in Tyrell Wolf, um, because there's a lot of cheap swords and ladies, and like big Tyrell lords are good. Um, I mean, I just think like trading a one x, a one cost lord for like a Renly is just <laughs> <It's bunker>. dumb. <laughs> Like, can you imagine if we had this in the Mace deck? Like, oh, oh God. Oh, Je Jesse, I, like, <laughs> retroactively, Roy last summer just, like, got hard. <laughs> like, just, like, through space and time right there. Like, well, if, this had been in the Mace, if this had been in the Mace deck, then, like, <laughs> one member of our team would, would have the trophy because, like, it would be busted. It, no, one member of our team wouldn't because literally everyone would have just played that deck. <laughs> Well, yeah, like, well, but look, we played against other people who had versions of the deck, including our own version. Yeah, we but played the air, best version. With air, it no longer takes any skill. <laughs> it's not like we you need the best version. It's like oh, cool, I mean, it's I disagree. Oh, oh, I disagree. I think people will try to play behind the gates, and you will have to outplay them. You will have to play around it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can play two, so not as hard to play around. I mean, well, you can no, play two but behind you, the gates. Yeah, that's you, true, but I don't know. 
double you barring, play targ, you barring play targ, the gates is sometimes good, and this is always good, right? Like it's I don't know. Targ I, mean, barring the, I think barring the gates is good in. I think barring the gates is good in. Barra. Greyjoy. And Greyjoy. Like maybe Lannister, but what no. clansman is the only good Lannister? That's maybe it's hear. good in Night's Watch. Hey, you know where it's not good? Martell. <laughs> Martell. No. Stark, Martell, Targaryen. Tyrell. Uh, Tyrell. It's real bad in all those. <laughs> Night, Night, Night's Watch? Not a super big fan. Yeah, I, I wish Barring the Gates wasn't printed. I mean, I wish this box wasn't printed, but I also wish Barring the Gates wasn't printed. Sure. Or it was ruled so it doesn't work against Shadows, as Shadows, since Shadows is basically a game ability. Or just Limit 1. I think if that was a Limit 1, we wouldn't be that worried about it. I just think it's that one turn. Like, all it does is stop fun things, right? Like, it mostly, besides air, I guess, it mostly just doesn't do anything. I mean, else. so does King Plot, right? King Plot shuts down everything. Well, <laughs> what else do I wish wasn't printed? Let's just let's <laughs> I go. definitely would rather have Barring the Gates than King Plot any day. Uh, I think I'd rather have King Plot than Barring. Can we talk about my list now? There's one card on it, and I just want to talk about how bad it is. Let's Let's go. Let's do it. The Shield Islands is utter trash. (laughs) What does that card even do? It's time of plenty on a card. Give your opponent a bunch of cards for the whole game. That's what it is. Increase the number of cards each player draws in the draw phase by one. It costs two. That's all it does. (laughs) It is literal garbage. Let me take a tempo hit to give you cards. (laughs) God, I just want to talk about how boring of a card design this is, how bad it is, and just, oh, first time I see someone playing it, I'll scoop to them, because they're going to need the wins. <laughs> Ooh, if he, Jesse's he, saying that, then we're all in he, trouble. Matt, Matt is going to HRD this, just wait for it. So bad. <laughs> just wait, Matt's going to HRD it. <laughs> uh... You're going to have to build the deck. But if you HRD this, you're playing Tyrell, and you don't need, like, it's, <laughs> it's the stupidest thing to ever HRD because there's so much draw. Like, you don't, like, why would you do this? So there's never a, there's never a combo world where you would play this? Fuck, no. No. Okay. No. Like, because that's the main thing I could see it in, and just being like, look, I don't give a shit. You can draw it, all your cards, but I... No, because I don't think in any combo world you're going to be able to take the two gold hit, hit for it. Yeah. To so like expensive. to retroactively work next turn. Yeah. No, I mean I do think it's I think this box was clearly designed and I think in a different world than the world we live in. Like I think this was this box was clearly designed like when the Tyrell box was the Tyrell cards were like OP OP because there are a lot of answers to Tyrell cards which conveniently Danny answered with the restricted list um, mm. and brought Tyrell into line, but sort of like increase the power while the overall i think while the overall power level of the game was deflating a little bit in the wake of the restricted list um danny cranked the the power level up in certain factions the rich got richer here uh in a way that i think is going to be pretty detrimental from the game until the next time he makes an intervention with the restricted list but the fact that these tyrell cards are largely garbage uh i mean particularly the second one is a sign of that i think we need, like, this is going to shock everyone, I know, but we need a robust restricted list. <laughs> what? Like, we just... Here on Second Sons? We really are going old school today. I would, this... trade, I would trade an entire restricted list for a banned list of one card. What card? Trade routes. Oh. It's the worst thing that's ever happened in the game. I don't think it's, I don't think. The easy money. I don't it think takes, it takes it. It devalues resets. It devalues military claim. It doesn't matter. It makes bad players good because they can just refound, rebound. Oh, and if you mess the plot, if you get outplayed on that plot, oh, that's fine because you could just play another one. It doesn't matter. I mean, if I if I could add three words to one plot, the game would be fine. Cannot be saved. Alarm or ghoulis. <laughs> oh. Problem solved. Eh, not when you have trade rooms. I, it definitely <laughs> solves that. I mean, people try- people just don't play dupes, and they you know always have other cards to play. Yeah, yeah but like great. I would. That's the game I want to exist. No, I you wish we didn't have dupes. Also, if, if you if you don't play dupes, then every game feels different because you're no longer just looking for the same exact combination. Of um, I think I disagree with that, but I think I enjoy dupes. 
Yeah, because you play degenerate ass decks with things like dupes, Ace and Big Cat. Dupes are enjoyable as long as the game doesn't revolve around them. Yeah, but okay. it, it does. The <laughs> I know. I agree, but well, this is what I'm saying. Like Glazer, I ag- how am I put this? I agree with both of you. I think that dupes are too powerful. Like I, the Scott Levine position is one I have agreed with for a long time, but I also see the value of it. Like I think dupes were actually in a relatively decent place. They could have been strengthened a little bit from where they were in first edition, but they went too far. It's fine. I mean, but I, I just we can like... also just make Valor have five gold and six reserve. That'd be fine too. Sure. I'm sure. Fine with that. Sure. That's that's balanced. <laughs> I two claim, two claim also. Let's get that claim back on there. Yeah, <laughs> but we're at it. Yeah, if Valor and was a uh, House Martell only, and you know, uh, it, increased it, it, it. the number of plots in your plot deck by three, and I don't, I don't want Wars to come. I hate Wars to come. I, I wish that was never put in the game. Um, you know what it should never come back? Would be the most broken tar card ever. The aftermath. Oh, was that the one that discard? Was that the wild? The, the discard at, at, right. all locations. The, no, 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 no. At at the start of challenge phase, uh, pick three characters, discard all other characters from play, cannot be saved. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that card. Yeah. After well, it didn't that, say cannot be saved. Oh, it did. It did. But even though did. technically by the framework, yes. it didn't need to say that, right? If I remember correctly. Yes. Right. It was nuts, and like saved from really a thing anyway. But like, it was so nuts, and it would be so broken and hard. Flea bo- the second edition of Flea Bottom also breaks it a little bit. Broken in Targ, lols. <laughs> the faction is broken. <laughs> Alright, but we haven't talked about... I mean, we, we're we running late, and we haven't talked oh, about... Sea, sea of Blood? Sea of Blood, think... the, the big picture thing. So do we want to... No, we, wanna... we, we should just skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for another episode, because we do have a ton of content we need to produce between now and <laughs> when we get more <laughs> so... cards. I actually, I actually think we could do an entire episode on Sea of Blood and its effects on the meta. Wait, here, ready? I think it self-regulates because if it ever gets too popular, I think only two factions can run it. And those two actions are Gary and Greyjoy. No, what? No, Stark and Martell. Interesting. Uh... I have said it since the day it dropped. Martell Sea of Blood is the ultimate answer to Sea of Blood. If Sea of Blood ever becomes a problem, Martell will just roll them. Yep. If I if I if I think fifty percent of the field is going to be Sea of Blood, I'm bringing Martell every day of the week. Whether it be Sea of just, Blood or whether it be HRD Starfall, I'm going to ruin your life. Like you yeah, just well, lose. I mean, Stark Sea of Blood is perfectly fine too. You just drop a Winterfell and a Rickon, and you're just like, Pfft. you're Sea also, of Blood. You're playing also, no agenda. For the first time, people will actually agree with me. For the first time, I am right. King Rob is better in Sea of Blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. just says, um, no, you can't participate in this military yeah. challenge, idiot. Let's <laughs> get out of here. Unless you're playing against Martell, and then he has no military account. Correct. I love both those decks. I think those are, I think those are the only two places. If Sea of Blood ever gets too big, then it matters. For now, it's good in Targ, and it's good in... Uh, it's still good in Greyjoy. It's good Targ in Greyjoy. Greyjoy. But it's I, good I, don't, Greyjoy. I, don't, I don't think it is one if you play Stark and Martell. It's good in Tyrell too, with all the <laughs> pumps. Like in Tyrell, because I don't think Tyrell has that many military icons. It's good in like it's kind of good in everything. Like you can play it in everything. Like Lannister Tyrell Blood has is the pretty only, fun. Tyrell has the only two military icons you need, baby. Left and right, <laughs> get it together. <laughs> no one's doing any military challenges into you. Uh, <laughs> I don't like Tyrell C. I think Tyrell C is significantly behind Targ and Greyjoy. I think Sea of Blood is, is just... I think it is an acceptable... It's a medium agenda, in, at least a medium agenda in every single faction. That's um, but And so I think we'll see a lot of it at Thrones War, just because you need agendas, and it's acceptable agenda, and it does some cool things. Some people are going to like the playstyle it promotes. But if, like, if we're going into pure Jamie level thinking about the game, I do think that the read here we have is it in a flooded sea of blood meta martel is going to be very powerful probably stark as well but i think on the default targ and Greyjoy sea of blood is just busted um very very busted and i really hate that you can play events in the challenge phase in 
without when the outside of challenges with the agenda. I think the agenda would be much more balanced if you could only in the challenge phase play events during military challenges. Hey, in a uh, in a Thea Blood meta, like if it does take over, does Night's Watch kind of have a nice little slot with their ability to kill everyone when they're attacking on military and their ability to swing back with like their rangers and half hand? So maybe. Uh, honestly, <laughs> Glazer. I'm gonna answer honestly. I don't think so. No. No. Well, like I mean, in, a, in a, not in, in, in an even meta, but like if Sea of Blood's <coughs> a big deal. If Sea of Blood's a big deal, maybe. Like, problem is, like, you need a really wide board, and there's not a ton of ways to protect it. You're, you're protecting it by killing all their attackers on military challenges, yeah. right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. That's how you're like, protecting it. Star Stark is just like, eh, hey, screw you, Winterfell. Yeah, and Greyjoy will save. I mean, it's, it's just yeah. just a thought. Yeah, it's it's. They look, can it's punish, not a, like, there's not a lot of a, deck that can punish military challenges. It's a very fun play. I'm just not sure how good it is. Yeah. Build it for war. Build I mean, it for war. Like, that's what I would take if I was Night's Watch at war. I would take Night's Watch Sea of Blood. With Absolutely. Bastard's Letter and... Or that's a Stark card. Is that a Stark or a Night's Watch card? Yeah, that's a Stark card. You're talking about... I know what you're talking about, but I can't think of the name of it. It's in, this, it was in the last pack, right? And one one, and I'd go to town. But there's uh, there's uh, the surprise attack, or whatever it's called, for like yep. you kneel two rangers. You have to sacrifice two dudes, right? Or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's two different button. cards. There's the original one where you kneel two and kill every attacking character. Wait, wait, there's and the... then there's one where you sacrifice, right? There's the burning on the sand one where you're like uh not it like I know that doesn't make sense to second edition players, but the one where like if you nail a ranger, steward, and builder, like the challenge just ends. Mm -hmm. Oh god, I forgot about that card. It you just like that would be the fucking nut in Night's Watch Cohort. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Literally just had that thought right now on air. I was like, hmm. Wait, could you would you be able to just kneel one guy who's all three and call it a day? Oh we did. Hell yeah, card. you would. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's in the box, right? I will window glory. Is you no, go. you have to name Neil three builder characters, three ranger characters, or three Stuart characters. Oh so really? Can, yeah. And... That's horseshit. <laughs> and it's even templated in a way I believe that you can't go one builder, one ranger, one Stuart. It has to be three, yeah. right? That's oh. trash. <laughs> Right, because it reads, after a challenge initiated against you, kneel three builder characters, three ranger characters, or three steward characters. Like they've never worked together before or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand that. The template it's, is really poor on that. Or maybe boring. that's specifically decided, like, that they wanted that to be there. Hmm. But. All right. Um, I think that that brings us. We, we did it, guys. Mostly to the end of this episode, which, despite I apologize for the poor video quality, but the audio quality at least stayed good for the entire episode. So you know, when you win a few, you lose a few. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for joining us. We had an active chat. I appreciate that. Um, we'll be back for our final episode before war, uh, war uh, and we'll be doing a live episode at war. So we have uh, at least two more episodes coming in the next month. Uh, and that's pretty exciting. Um, I also want to thank people who support us on Patreon, because the only reason I was able to do this episode was that your funds uh, provided uh, me with this awesome headset, which is like the fanciest thing I own currently, uh, <laughs> after my dog smashed my headset yesterday while I was trying to do a call with a team staff member. So I, I appreciate uh, you all who support Second Sons and have been supporting us for four years that we've been wow. doing this, so... Doing this podcast for four years? I believe wow. so. Three, three, it might be three. But, yeah. Oh, God, it was right before Noah was born, I'm pretty sure. So it's three. But we're four seasons, so... Uh, so we turn four this year. So... Right? Because Noah turns All four right. this year, right? Noah turns three this year. Noah turns three this year, okay. I All think right. Carl but it's hard to remember. I remember the day he was born, I came home, and I was sitting here alone. And Will was like, want to do a podcast? And I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> I got nothing to do. <laughs> so my alone. wife and newborn are not here. Uh, so. Love you all. If you want to hear some real good, exciting commentary, The Wars to Come finally makes its comeback on Thursday. Oh, really? Wait, are, you yeah. still on, are you still on Wars to Come? 
I yeah. thought you put that trash because Groth spills decks. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Oh, You're mean. <laughs> Actually, Buzz is coming to the wars to come, buddy. Oh, what? What? Uh, he's hey, just hey. running. He's just running our stuff for money. Got it. <laughs> We're just paying him for his services. Okay. That'll yeah. get Buzz excited, apparently. Um, hired hand. Uh, so who's going to be on the episode? Me, Alex, Alejandro, CT. Hey, hey, hey Sid. Yeah. I'd be careful about letting Buzz say anything, because Groth might just steal a few of your decks. <laughs> oh, my God. Make sure he stays on the technical side. You know, uh, silence. And, and, Oh, yeah, I'm sure everyone wants to see your guys' Targ fealty. <laughs> HRD Marine. <laughs> Targ Sea of Blood. Hey, Targ Crossing. The Shadows deck is doing some really outside the box uh, things, guys. <laughs> Putting right. into Shadows, taking uh, uh, them out. What's hey, in Shadows? Hey. You don't know. It's a mystery. Hey. But, it, but for some reason, Buzz has convinced you guys to probably play First Snow of Winter because it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> he would love it if we did, but luckily. Yeah, you would. Even he doesn't have that much pull. All so right. it's so wait, it's important to note that like Groth will steal common shit. He'll steal a Terrell <laughs> Wars or a Martel Wolf. So like he's not Oh a my gosh, Groth is one of my bug. good friends. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine for a thief. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, all right. There's no stealing deckless. We play a game, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, there's definitely stealing deckless, whether it matters or not is a different <laughs> question. But it is definitely stealing deckless. We we yeah. really have gone into the old school Second Sons. Poor production values. <laughs> me and Glazer and Sid for most of the show talking of endlessly about box cards. It's it's really is this is an old school Second Sons episode. Ragging on ragging overseas that are like old pettiness. Old. Pettiness. All right. Can we go? But, yes, we can go. <laughs> Uh, it was great to have everyone. I'm going to kill the stream now. Uh, good night, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Good night, everybody.